Welcome to Smoky Ribs, I'm Russ Jones. We're starting this new year off with a bang. We're doing a new series, brand new series. It's gonna be a beginner's only series, starting with the bare basics and working our way up through the different smokers, showing you how to operate these smokers, how they work, why they work, and how to cook on them with great success. We're gonna be focusing mainly on the actual cookers and what's going on more than the cooks. We will be doing cooks in the videos just to show you the results from things that I'm teaching you and showing you. I hope you enjoy it. This is tailored mainly for beginners that are new to this, that want to learn. And I hope that we can do a thorough, thorough, thorough walkthrough on everything to your satisfaction to where you can really get the most from all this. We're gonna get started today, going all the way back down to bare basics, the way I got started with live fire cooking. Gonna get started right after this. All right, so let's just dive right into this. Let me show you my setup over here. All right, so what you're looking at is an old fire pit. I bought this probably two or three years ago. It's about half rusted out, as you can see. But this is where we build fires in the backyard for just hanging around, talking, drinking cold beer on a cold night, stuff like that. But anyway, I'm going to have my fire in here. And what I'm using for a grate is this MMM grill. This is all stainless steel. This is, uh, stands for Master Machine Manufacturing. They're actually a big machine company. They're a machinist. And uh, they're making this grill. It's very portable. There's two stakes that you drive into the ground and the stakes have spades on them to act as anchors to stop the weight from you know, bending over. And uh, it takes about one minute to set this up, seriously. Very easy. But this thing will last a lifetime. And so you know, this series is not about any particular brands. I'm strictly showing you what I have and what I use. Now, if you're interested in any of the things that I use throughout this series, I will have links to everything I use in the description below. Before I get into actually building the fire and explaining to you what I'm doing, I'm gonna go ahead and get this chicken prepped up. All I wanna do is take and spray these with some cooking oil. This is a canola cooking oil. This is gonna act as a binder for our rub, and it's also gonna give it some non-stick properties when it goes down onto this grate. So you can season this any way you want. What I'm using is this cockadoodle brew. This is by PS Seasoning. It's their beer can chicken rub. I'm not doing beer can chicken, but it is an excellent chicken rub. I've already put it into a shaker and we're just gonna apply this with a generous amount. Oh, that smells pretty good. Flip it over to the back side. Nice, generous amount there. I'm just gonna pull this off to the side. We're just gonna let this hang out while we get this fire going. So let's get into actually building the fire. The first thing you want to consider is where you're going to be cooking at. I've only got four pieces of chicken. I'm going to put them over here. This is going to be our cool side. In other words, there's not going to be any fire directly under it. I'm building my fire off to the side of it and I'm going to burn this wood all the way down to charcoal, all the way down to hot coals. And the ability of this grill, you can raise and lower it as needed. If you need this a little closer to the fire, then you can do that. Now you don't have to have a setup like this. Many times when I was growing up, we would take big rocks, make a circle and find a grate that would fit it. And we could uh, use that as a stove top. If we wanted to use like cast iron skillets, we could use it as a grill top. Just a lot of uses when it comes to outdoor style cooking with a live fire. So what I want to do is go ahead and remove this grate get it out of the way and we're going to start this fire. All right, so growing up, one thing my dad taught me a long time ago was that when you're building a fire, the best starter out there that's natural in the woods is this right here. This is lighter. This comes from the pine tree. It's got all that rosin in there and that stuff will light up just about like gasoline. Well, maybe not that quick. But anyway, it's a good way to get a fire going. It will catch 
pretty rapidly, as you can see. I'm just gonna lay this right between these logs. I've got a few more pieces of this that we're gonna lay to where they'll catch. In a few minutes, we'll have a good fire coming out of the middle of this. And this will get our actual wood started. I grew up cooking over open fire like this. This method is as old as man is. Man has been cooking over live open fire ever since the beginning. And a lot of people still do it out camping and just for the pure love of it. I'm in my backyard doing it. There's nothing I enjoy more. This, this style of cooking is one of my favorites. And I would highly recommend you get accustomed to doing this. And once you really get this nailed down, you can work magic with anything like a barbecue grill or a pit. As I said, we'll get into all that later on. So I've got a good cold bed established. I got more burning just on top of that. That's also gonna burn down into uh, coals. So I went ahead and put my chicken on. As you can see, I've got them skin side down. We're getting a little heat here. I'll monitor this. I might have to lower it. I might have to move them over a little. That's the whole thing about live fire cooking. You do, you let it tell you what it needs to be done. But the one thing you don't want to do is have fire from one end to the other that you can't control, that you can't get high enough away from. Another thing that uh, I would recommend doing is having you a separate fire bed over here, keeping some wood burning to where if, if you need coals, like on a longer cook, this isn't going to take long, but on a longer cook, you might find yourself needing more coal bed. So just reach over here, shovel some out from there into here. That'll keep you rolling without ever missing a beat. Now, once you master this style of cooking, you can easily operate a uh, Santa Maria style grill or Argentine style grill. It's the same thing. It's live fire cooking where they build a fire inside of this this pit, but it's open. It's open to the air just like this, and their grates have the ability to raise and lower. So it's basically the exact same thing. All right, we're beginning to cook a little bit on this one side of this chicken. So let me show you how I'm gonna take and rearrange them to where everything is kind of cooking at the same time. This is the closest to the fire. You always want your thickest side closest to the fire, then a side away. Let's flip it over. I can hear it sizzling. You can see the color it's starting to get. So what I wanna do is swap places with this one. As you see, it's not quite the same color. It's closer, so they're both cooking. Thickest side forward. Let's take a look at that one. Starting to get a little char right there even. Oh yeah, looking good. So we're gonna move that one back, put this one in its place. I'll be flipping these back and forth and just basically doing what you're seeing. I'll be going from front to back and so forth, flipping them, looking at them. And uh, once I think they're getting close, and at that time I'm gonna sauce them up. And by the way, if you're getting into grilling and smoking and barbecue for the very first time, I'm gonna tell you right now that probably one of the most important tools that you can buy is one of these right here. That is an instant read thermometer. This one is a uh, thermal pen brand made by Thermal Works. Not promoting them, that's just what I have. I also have a few other brands. They all work good. So look at cost and, and let your budget be the guide on that. Just get you a good one that you know you can depend on. And I, you can thank me later on that. The thing is invaluable. Just like this, I, I will know without a doubt that it's time to pull these you know, when they reach 165 internal temperature minimum. Now these are thighs, they're a little bit more forgiving. So I like to bring thighs up to about 180, 185. I have no problem with that. They're still real tender and juicy, but they pull apart better and they're more tender at that temperature. So these are looking really good. I just checked the internal temperature. I'm at 165 on every one of these. And my neighbors have just let the dogs out. So <laughs> we're dealing with that. And I've got a guy back here in the back 
building uh, his new wood fence, but that's not going to deter us. We're just going to sauce these up. That little char right there and right there on the corners, that's pure flavor right there. Who let the dogs out? Get us a little sauce on this side. Now I am liable to do this two or three more times before this gets up to the 185, 190 internal that I'm looking for. So I just checked with my instant read and I am reading about 180. 187, 188 in that one right there. I don't know if you can see that on that other camera or not. And 187 there, we are done. Now if you have noticed, I started over here and now I'm more at the center of it. And it goes back to what I originally said You've got to do what the grill tells you to do. If it's not cooking quick enough, then move it over closer to the fire. If it's too hot, move it away from the fire. You can also go up or you can go down on this particular kind of grill. Now, not all grills do that. If they're stationary, supported by rocks, and naturally, you're just gonna move things away from the fire. So, it's good techniques to know, and you will see in future videos how this transfers over into just about any kind of grill or smoker there is. It's all about heat and how to maintain that heat, how to control that heat, how to, like in, this is a live fire. I mean, how can you tame down a live fire? Well, easily by the size of it and the distance away from it when you're cooking. That's basically it in a nutshell. And if you can master that, like I said, there's so many other grills that you're not gonna have no problem with. We'll be getting into those as we go uh, throughout this series. For right now, let's move these over here in our cool zone. And I say cool zone, it's still really warm, but it's not going to char or continue to cook much. I'm gonna pull these off, put them over here, just let them cool down for maybe five to 10 minutes tops. Just let them cool down to where I can give you a quick taste. There again, this is not about the cook, this is about how to cook it. By the way, the dogs went back in, but the guys are still nailing up boards over here. <laughs> I can never win. I decided to clean this grill while it was still hot and see how well that worked. And I had started down like, you know what? I need to get this on camera. So I flipped this camera on and I got the tail end of it. Wet you a towel and man, it just comes right off. It doesn't leave anything on it. This thing cleans up really well if you'll do it while it's still over the fire. All right, let's give this a try. Just a quick taste. Boy, it sure looks good. Look at the color on that, just as juicy as it can be. I tell you what, that is the magic of cooking over real wood. I don't care what kind of meat you cook, whether it be chicken or pork chops or grilling a steak or grilling burgers or whatever. It's always going to be amplified when you're using real wood. You just can't beat it. And it's a really good way to start your barbecue grilling journey. Now, I did chicken. A steak would be basically the same if you had a thick steak. You would put it off to one side and you would slowly bring that internal temperature up. And then you got your hot side for a quick sear on each side. Steaks get a good sear. Same thing with burgers. If you had a nice thick burger, bring it up slowly, get that internal about where you want it, then sear it off. This is transferable to so many things. You can do vegetables on an outdoor grill like this. It's very simple. There's not a lot of investment in a little setup like this, and it's a lot of fun. Next week, we're moving into another basic what I consider the most basic grill out there and probably the most owned grill out there. And I'm referring to a kettle grill. And you'll see how a lot of what I showed you here today relates to that grill as well. 
And from there, you know, we're gonna do probably a low and slow, real barbecue type cook. It's gonna be more drawn out and lengthier, but I can show you how easy you can cook basically anything, all the way up to a brisket on one of these kettle grills. Gonna do that next week. Until next time, Smoker is Barbecue.